Congratulations, Krabby Patty. That was my very first game. Now why would Spongebob lie to us like this? One coveted title that many wish they could lay claim to was the first Spongebob Squarepants video game. In Employee of the Month, AWE boldly declared that they created the first Spongebob game with Operation Krabby Patty. While this isn't true, it was the first AWE game, and their series seemed to take place in its own spin on the Spongebob universe. So in their own continuity, they weren't entirely wrong. But actually, the title is held by Legend of the Lost Spatula, which came out in March of 2001. Though a few people have told me that Obstacle Odyssey had an earlier unfinished version that came out even before it, but I haven't been able to find any Thing that could verify this. If we want to be even more technical, Spongebob appeared as a playable character in Nicktoons Racing before any of this, though that wasn't a Spongebob Squarepants game per se, so it isn't too much of a stretch to call Legend of the Lost Spatula Spongebob's first game. This was developed by Vicarious Visions and Engine Software for the Game Boy Color. Vicarious Visions made many Game Boy versions of games that had much bigger console counterparts. This includes Battle for Bikini Bottom, Revenge of the Flying Dutchman, and even Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. They were acquired by Activision back in 2005 and merged with Blizzard in 2022. Now they go by Blizzard Albany. They're still out there making games today, including Diablo 4. They sure have come a long way since this. Engine Software is also still active, but they mostly handle porting. Some of the games they've ported to various consoles include Terraria, Little Nightmares and its sequel, and No More Heroes. So yeah, these are two really big companies that came together to make this happen. But this was one of their earlier works, so let's check it out and see where they started from. At the menu, we get this classic sounding Game Boy music. Then when we begin, we have a narration that introduces us to Bikini Bottom. I imagine it's the French narrator saying all this. SpongeBob finds a statue of a fry cook on an oven. Curious about this, he goes to ask Mr. Krabs about it. Mr. Krabs then goes into a detailed exposition monologue about the statue's history. According to him, it marks the entrance to the Flying Dutchman's underworld. He tells the story of a legendary fry cook who had a sacred golden spatula. The first appearance of a golden spatula in a SpongeBob game. He lived in a city called Palm Bay that was destroyed by a volcanic eruption. And yeah, Palm Bay, Pompeii, yeah. So the Flying Dutchman took over the remains of the city, and the key to it is hidden in Goo Lagoon. So now you have to find the key to reach the Golden Spatula. When the gameplay starts, you can go around town talking to the different characters. Some give you advice, and others just say silly things. But dialogue changes as the game goes on, so that's a neat feature that they took time to include. When you head downtown, you... Hey, w hey wait a minute, where'd you come from? Yep, they throw an enemy at you with no prior warning. That sets the formula that most enemies in this will follow. Whenever you take a hit, you lose your pants. If you take another, you lose your underpants and die. You can find hall monitor belts around that give you an extra life, but it's easy to quickly waste it. Whenever you defeat an enemy, they sprint off the screen. Sometimes the direction they run in can be unpredictable. If they hit you while they're running away, you still take damage. They'll just run in circles if they're in between walls, so you have to move the screen to make them disappear. If they're on a platform, they just run through the air. You're telling me you can defy physics, but some guy blowing bubbles is enough to scare you away? To the left of town is a place called Sandy's Park. I guess Sandy owns the whole park now. This will lead you to the first platforming section. Throughout the stages, you jump through the sky into different ledges, sometimes moving ones. Though this is more difficult than your usual platform jumper. For each button you press, there seems to be a slight delay before SpongeBob responds to what you said. This is especially tough when you need him to attack, but it also makes it hard to jump because you can't be as precise as you might want to be. You have to adjust to it over time. For now, everyone wants you to go to Goo Lagoon, so that's where you should head first. What might confuse you right away is that you can talk to NPCs here, but there are also enemies walking around. You just might confuse the first one for an NPC and try to talk to it. The main enemies you encounter are fish that walk around and ones such as clams or jellyfish that fly through the air. To defeat these, you need to open your inventory and switch to the jellyfish net. You get it later. You use a bubble wand against regular opponents. You have to continuously switch between items in your inventory, especially after you find more of them. Whenever you do, you have to open the menu and go to the inventory screen to select which one you want to use. It's very common that you'll need to use something like the spring shoes to jump to a higher platform, but then an enemy will come at you right away and you'll have to switch to the item you need to fight them with. 
But back to the plot. You jump through a bunch of platforms until you reach a large anchor in the sky. It then takes you all the way down to the center of the Earth. Okay, maybe not that deep, but there you find a treasure chest. This somehow gives you the knowledge that you need four oven knobs to unlock the statue. You also get a map, which is helpful. Then you have to find a way to get back to the surface, and as long as we don't meet any skeletons in blue sweaters while we're down here. But that might be preferable to the amount of clam enemies you get battered with. This is where the difficulty first makes itself known. It doesn't matter how far you travel, how much progress you make, or even if you make it back to Goo Lagoon. If you die, you get sent all the way back to the treasure chest. And this is actually forgiving compared to how far back some future levels can send you. Checkpoints are rare, so you often end up being sent back to the very beginning of stages whenever you lose. All the enemies respawn, and you don't regain any perishable items you used. You need Krabby Patties to defeat certain bosses, so losing them might put you in a serious pinch. So I should also mention how the save system works. On the pause menu, you can see a code. You can write it down and put it in at the main menu to continue, though it does take you out of the stage and bring you back in front of your house. At least this way you can go back and collect more stuff if you have to. It seems like a tedious save system, but it's necessary to avoid backing yourself into a corner. Now let's head to Jellyfish Fields, which is absolutely crawling with enemies. We now have these giant slug things that shoot at you. They can be a real hassle to deal with. We also have water spouts that shoot you into the sky and create this hilarious image of Spongebob. He looks like a wailing piece of bread. This stage is tough because there are spouts that fling you everywhere and enemies coming from every direction. Many of them are flying right where the spouts launch you, so you'll often be carried directly into them. It really makes you wish you could take more than two or three hits. Thankfully, these portals can act as checkpoints if you go through them. They're still only halfway through the level, though. Oh, and I shouldn't forget to mention the April Fool's chests. If you open them expecting some kind of item or extra life, all they say is April Fool's. Wow. Now I know how Spongebob felt after Squidward's prank. This coupled with the amount of times the game leads you into a passage that corners you shows that the developers really wanted to pull some sneaky antics with this. You can find glasses that show you what items are inside chests, but there's no harm in just opening every chest you see anyway. More of the developers' antics include these clams that eat you. They're really hard to avoid. There are also urchins that move along the ceilings and floors of platforms. Once you endure this endless onslaught of enemies that respawn after you leave the screen, you reach a giant jellyfish that serves as a boss. It flies around and tries to sting you, but it's actually kind of easy to avoid. You can even deflect it if you attack before it stings. You have to use your bubble wand to blow bubbles up to it, and you really just have to aim them correctly. The boss fights are actually breaths of fresh air because they aren't as difficult as the regular stages, and when you die, they don't send you back to the start. Once you figure out the pattern to defeat one, they're all pretty simple. So anyway, the jellyfish gives you the first oven knob. Now you can head back to Bikini Bottom and complete missions for your friends. I really appreciate how much you can do in this despite how short of a game it is. They really did their best to emulate walking around Bikini Bottom and interacting with the characters and- Oh. Oh no. This line. This has got to be the single greatest line in any Spongebob video game ever made. Everything about it is perfect. The poor grammar, the use of a C instead of a K, the lack of proper capitalization. I'm almost positive the developers threw this in as a joke. All he wants is Krabby Patty. So anyway, Patrick is naked. He's supposed to be wearing a barrel, but the Game Boy graphics sometimes leave much to be desired. He lost his pants at the carnival, so that's our next destination. Now we get to meet these terrible silverfish-like enemies that are really hard to avoid. Also, if you were expecting a real carnival, you'd be surprised to see it's actually the hooks. This is a nice reference to an episode, and one I didn't really expect. It makes for a good platform jumper location. You jump from hook to hook, looking for both Patrick's pants and the next oven knob. Yeah, it's extremely difficult and easy to get lost in, but I like the location. You have to remember which ways you've already been, but if you fall, you have to start the jumping process all over again. That makes it hard to keep track of which hooks you need to jump to to get back where you were. There are arrow signs that sometimes tell you where to go, but they aren't exactly helpful since you're on your own once you're in the field of hooks. But once you find the stuff you need, you head back and get your special special net all reliable as exchange for Patrick's pants. The one I mentioned you need to catch flying enemies with. Also the urchins. Now Sandy's lost her hat in the desert, the very same one you found the statue in. You might be glad to see this one doesn't require you to travel multiple paths and remember which ways you've already been, but the enemies here are relentless. If you survive their bombardment, you reach a cave with this difficult platform section. 
We have scallops flying around and a slug shooting at you. You have to switch back and forth between the right weapons in your inventory to fight through these without losing all your lives. Then there are two more scallops waiting for you to jump into them. This is a really challenging portion and requires time and patience to get your timing right. But whenever you die between this part and the boss fight, you have to do it all over again. And the rest of the stage is as unforgiving as it gets. But if you can endure, you reach this boss who shoots shots of ketchup at you. You have to avoid them, but if you stand either on or below a ledge, depending on where he's shooting from, he can't even hit you. Just get his pattern down and wait for him to go to one place or the other, then shoot a Krabby Patty at him. He does take a lot of hits, but if you keep this up, you should be able to win. An easy boss fight to finish off a stage that probably made you cry. Afterwards, Sandy gives you the net launcher from the episode Sandy's Rocket. It's a handy weapon, but only against very specific enemies. You can only go on Mr. Krabs' mission to deliver a Krusty Krab pizza to the Kelpozoic jungle after getting it. It's still hard, but it took me less time to clear than the desert. It only gets especially hard at the very end, where you have to time a jump perfectly to land on the customer without hitting these spiky spaces on the floor. It sends you pretty far back if you miss, but you have no way of knowing what's on the floor until you fall. But once that's over, you still have to find the knob, so you go on until you meet this boss who throws shells at you. They're easy to avoid. You shoot him with bubbles until he jumps down, then you shoot him with the net launcher until he's defeated. Another easy victory. Then when you have all the knobs, SpongeBob opens the oven and falls inside. Now before I show you this next location, I have a question to ask. What is one thing that absolutely every SpongeBob game in the early 2000s needed to include? You probably guessed it, it's Rock Bottom, every Spongebob developer's favorite location. I mean, it is a really cool setting. I like the deep sea as much as anyone else. The level is fine too. It isn't actually that long of a stage because you eventually fall into the Flying Dutchman's underworld. This is where you fight ghost pirates that you need the net to defeat. Yeah, totally effective against incorporeal opponents. Again, it's a cool location, but it does have a long platform jumping section that you have to do all over again if you fall. But eventually, you reach the final boss, the Flying Dutchman himself. He actually gives you a hint for how to defeat him by saying he hasn't had a good meal in ages. You jump and duck to avoid the ghosts he sends at you, run out of the way to avoid stuff he drops on you, then when he leaves himself open, you shoot a Krabby Patty at him. All he wants is Krabby Patty. You repeat this process until he goes down. I guess they wanted to take it easy on you at the very end. After this, you find the golden spatula and win. This makes SpongeBob the greatest fry cook in Bikini Bottom and Mr. Krabs even richer. The end. So, what do we think? Well, for the time, it was nice to have something that allowed you to go around the locations from SpongeBob SquarePants and interact with characters from the show. As the first SpongeBob game, there wasn't anything like this at the time. You had to wait until Super Sponge and Operation Krabby Patty came out later in the year. For kids in the 2000s, this might have been their first experience with an interactive SpongeBob universe. And as a representation of that universe, the game does a good job. It has locations that were in the show, it makes use of the characters, and lets you explore the scenery. The concept also works. But there are things the developers could have done differently here and there that could have improved the gaming experience. I think allowing SpongeBob to take extra hits or including more checkpoints would have gone a long way. It's surprisingly difficult for a SpongeBob game. A more easily accessible inventory would have also been convenient. I also think the actions could have had quicker response times when the buttons were pressed. Also quicker attacks and less overpowered enemies. But regardless, this was a new thing for the SpongeBob team to try out and I respect it for starting the long line of SpongeBob video games that we have today. It's an important piece of history and one I'm sure many SpongeBob fans have some good memories with. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.